वेलकम टू द फोकस सीरीज आई एम डॉक्टर गोपाल कृष्ण जालवाल असिस्टेंट प्रोफेसर इन एनेस्थीशिया डिपार्टमेंट टूडे इन दिस वीडियो आई विल एक्सप्लेन अबाउट द गैस्ट्रिक अल्ट्रासाउंड गैस्ट्रिक अल्ट्रासाउंड इज ए सिंपल फास्ट नॉन इन्वेजिव बेड साइड डायग्नोस्टिक टेस्ट इट इज़ वेरी हेल्पफुल फॉर द एनेस्थीशियोलॉजिस्ट इंटेंसिविस्ट और एमरजेंसी मेडिसिन डॉक्टर्स By the gastric ultrasound we can know whether patient is full stomach or empty stomach and we can also determine is it clear liquid or solid content in the antrum so this information is very helpful for the clinician to know the aspiration risk while handling the airway let's start with the stomach anatomy stomach has five distinct sections first one is the cardia second one is the fundus third one is the body hair antrum and pylorus as a gastric ultrasound our interest is in the antrum because it is only easily identifiable on ultrasound in the epigastric region and one more thing is that it is also more dependable area of the stomach and uh, whenever you eat something it will gravitate toward the antrum so antrum also has the five distinct layers which may or may not be visible on the ultrasound what are those five layers from the luminal to extra luminal you can see mucosa muscularis mucosa submucosa muscularis propria and uh, serosa these antrum layers are helpful to differentiate the antrum from the surrounding tissue antrum has a close relation with the left side left lobe of the liver and the pancreas gastric ultrasound can be performed either in supine or right lateral decubitus position supine position underestimates the gastric content because in this position food contents gravitate toward the fundus large quantity can be visualized in this position but smaller quantity can be missed that's why it leads to false negative results right lateral decubitus position is most sensitive because in this position food contents gravitate toward the antrum and that's why it access the accurate gastric content and it is ideal position to confirm the antrum content for the gastric ultrasound we use the low frequency curvilinear probe and first i will assess the patient in a supine position and will place this low frequency curvilinear probe just below the gyphoid process in the epigastric region okay now i have raised it here you can see these are the rectus muscles and this is a left lobe of liver and this oval shaped structure near the left lobe of the liver is a antrum just below the antrum this is a pancreas and this is a superior mesenteric artery and here you can see the aorta this is a sono anatomy of same patient in the right lateral decubitus position here you can see these are the rectus muscles and this is a liver and this this is a antrum here antrum size appears larger than the supine position because food contents gravitate toward the antrum into the right lateral decubitus position and just below the antrum here you can see hyperechoic structure that is the pancreas and this is a superior mesenteric artery 
this is a parota. So this is the sonu anatomy of a patient with the empty stomach when you place the low frequency curvilinear probe in epigastric region. Uh, this is a rectus muscle and just below the rectus muscle you will see a homogeneous structure that is the liver. And uh, adjacent to the left lobe of the liver you will see a round and oval shaped structure that is the antrum. Uh, it is also described as a bull's eye. Uh, because of his structure and uh, when patient is empty stomach uh, you can also appreciate the mucosal fold and the peristaltic movement in the antrum in few patient uh, uh, five layers of the gastric antrum can be visualized and that is very helpful to identify the antrum from the surrounding structure and uh, in between the antrum and liver you will see another hyperechoic structure that is the pancreas and uh, just below the pancreas you will see two anechoic uh, vessels upper one that is the superior mesenteric artery and lower one that is the aorta both pulsatile uh, structure and just below the aorta you can uh, see the spine This is a sono anatomy of a patient who has taken the clear fluid water 30 minutes before performing the gastric ultrasound. Here you can see the clear fluid water uh, looks like anechoic or hypechoic into the antrum and antrum wall is also thinned out. Unlike the thicker antrum wall uh, as we seen into the empty stomach. As the physiological process of swelling is associated with the swelling of air as well and that's why if you perform the gastric ultrasound just after taking the clear fluids or carbonated drinks you will see the hyperechoic clots into the anechoic fluid and that gives the starry night appearance. I have placed the low frequency curvilinear probe in an epigastric region in right lateral decubitus position. Here you can see the heterogeneous appearance of solid gastric content that is mixed with the anechoic or hyperchoic fluid. Now we are going to assess the uh, gastric volume. To assess the gastric volume, first we have to assess the cross-sectional area of the stomach. So now I am going to assess the cross-sectional area. So, so this is a cross-sectional area that is 2.6 centimeters square and if you apply the this uh, re, uh, finding into the uh, formula you can assess the gastric volume. So cross-sectional area of the antrum is 2.66 centimeters square and patient age is 60 year. 
so when you apply this finding 2.66 cm square in this formula to calculate the gastric fluid volume it comes minus 10.97 because it is a uh, it value is in a minus then the next step is check the normogram to get the gastric volume so in the normogram you can see that if cross sectional area is three less than three centimeters square and age is more than 50 then it means the gastric volume is 0 ml Okay. That is seven point five four centimeters scale. Okay. Now we will put this finding into the formula. Okay, and let's see. Here cross sectional area of antrum is seven point five four centimeters square and patient age is twenty year old. So when you will put these findings into the formula, you will get 111.4 ml gastric volume this finding is also consistent with the value of the normogram here you can see that if cross sectional area is between the 7 to 8 centimeter square then uh, somewhere it is 111.4 ml This is the algorithm for the aspiration risk. If you perform the preoperative gastric ultrasound and you see the solid content into the antrum, then it means there is a high aspiration risk. So, but if you see the clear fluid, then you have to calculate the volume of the gastric content. If it is less than 1.5 ml per kg, then it is consistent with the gastric juices in empty stomach if it is a more than 1.5 ml per kg then there is a high chances of aspiration and if patient is empty stomach then also there is a low risk of aspiration